Hi, my name is Christopher Malcolm. I'm a Los Angeles-based lifestyle fitness and active wear photographer, and I'm here to talk to you about the art of collaboration. So today we're going to go behind the scenes of my latest series, The Soft Skin. For a location, I chose uh, Natural Studios, which is in South Los Angeles. Uh, and primarily I chose it for its um, big, these big beautiful windows and there was enough space that I could kind of flip back and forth uh, between natural light and studio. And one of the things I like to do when I'm shooting is try to get as much, um, basically as much coverage as possible in this small amount of time. By having these very kind of large windows on the side, essentially what it allows me to do is essentially uh, between just basically rotating 90 degrees um, and setting up the uh, studio in an appropriate way uh, and just moving lights around, you're basically able to get multiple looks in a very short period of time just by adjusting you know, where, where I put the lights uh, and what part of the room I'm using. Basically able to kind of get multiple, multiple looks uh, all in one location to really kind of maximize the production. So the idea behind the shoot was to try to create kind of empowering images. Um, that would be both kind of elegant and athletic at the same time. You know, it would kind of reiterate the feeling that, you know, strong is beautiful. And um, to do that, I had to really pull together the right team uh, to have a place in order to kind of make this, these, bring these images that were in my head uh, out into reality. You know, it's easy to uh, assume when you, know, when you see a great piece of art or especially like a great photograph, it's easy to assume that that's just 110% just, be, you know, the result of the photographer. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, it's a team sport. You know, uh, creating artwork, especially photography and especially kind of commercial photography, um, it's a collaborative process and there's a lot of different uh, brains, a lot of different uh, sources of talent that go into kind of creating an image and making it feel uh, right and being able to tell uh, the client's story is partly based on being able to put the right team in place and work with that team to execute uh, the concept in, in the, the most efficient and the most creative way possible. So generally our photographic project starts with some sort of brief. Uh, usually this is generated by the client. Uh, they'll come to me and say, you know, we're trying to promote this brand or that brand. Uh, and here's kind of what we'd like to see. Now those briefs can be incredibly detailed. Uh, you know, some people are like, you know, we want it exactly like this, we want it lit like this, we want to shoot at this time of day. Uh, some people will just come to you with kind of a basic concept, like this is the product and we want you to make it look cool. Uh, and you know, as in my job, you kind of figure out, you know, what is this, that, what story is they're trying to tell and figure out the best way to tell that. Uh, so I can work with you know either form of uh, direction. It's just a matter of trying to getting to the core of what it is that the client is after and figuring out the best way to uh, deliver that. Once I get a handle on what story it is that the client is trying to tell, uh, the first thing that I do is I go into kind of like what I would call like a brainstorming phase, where I just kind of you know I look for kind of reference images. I think of songs, movie lyrics. Uh, just uh, personal memories, anything that gives me kind of like an emotional connection to uh, the story is that the client's trying to tell. Uh, and a large part of it just consists of me staring blankly at the wall. <laughs> and people probably think I'm crazy, but really what I'm doing is I'm trying to generate ideas and trying to kind of figure out uh, what is the most effective way to uh, tell the story of the brand. Once I'm done with that, I basically build, you know, kind of my pre-shoots, or I build kind of almost like a document uh, either literally or figuratively, figuratively, but basically a kind of a starting kind of conversation document so that I can then communicate what I'm seeing in my head back to the client and then, you know, make sure we're on the same page, make sure we're going in the right direction, and, you know, once we're on the same page then we can get the ball rolling. I haven't really kind of thought the thing through and kind of gone through the brainstorming phase and worked with the client to make sure that everybody is kind of in lockstep and kind of marching towards the same goal. Uh, the next step for me is to kind of assemble the pieces that are going to help uh, bring that together, assemble the team. You know, uh, picking the right crew, it's kind of like um, picking teams in a pickup game, in a pickup game of basketball, right? 
you know, it's usually, you know, he who picks the best team, the best uh, teammates ends up winning the game, right? Um, and like a game of basketball, usually you pick people for their own specific strengths. And so my job as a photographer is to uh, know what the strengths there are of various team members and bring the right kind of tools to bear on a client's project. So, you know, based on the kind of story I knew I wanted to tell, I knew that, you know, a wardrobe is, was going to play a huge factor in kind of conveying to the audience the story of these women's lives. And so I wanted to bring on, bring on a top stylist. I ended up uh, reaching out to Ashley Amber Crombie, who's done a ton of great work, um, and getting her to uh, sign on to the project, which I'm super glad I did because she was really able to uh, bring the project to another level. It was also pretty uh, clear, uh, kind of right from our first uh, conversations, that you know she has uh, as much of a passion for clothing as I have for, for photography, which is exactly what you want. You know, you want a team that's engaged uh, in every step of the process, and it, you know, it really has um, some skin in the game. You know, uh, you want people who who believe in their in their work, uh, and for the for whom. Um, Creating something wonderful is a matter of, of pride, you know, it's, it's more than a paycheck, it's about kind of creating something special each time out. Uh, you know, I always feel like um, the opportunity to create art, I think, is one of the greatest gifts uh, you can be given in life, you know, and when you get the opportunity to, you know, put your stamp on something and kind of create something that can last in the world, I, you know, I. I I love that challenge and I always look forward to uh, the opportunity to, uh, to participate in any project like that and, and you know it's about you know completely giving your all you know you, 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 you're fascinated on the project and you die full board and uh, at the end of it you know there's just nothing like it when you can create something special uh, that can stand the test of time. The other thing that uh, Ashley and I had in common which I think is very helpful for this project is uh, preparation. I'm almost uh, notorious for my um, for my pre-shoots, for my planning. I, I like to have as much of the shoot kind of laid out uh, before I ever get on set to make sure that you know everybody's gonna be in the right place at the right time. I know I don't have enough time to get through my shot list. I want to make sure that I'm planning for contingencies, that I'm prepared to uh, succeed. You know, it, it's, what do they say? Uh, Failing to prepare is the same thing as preparing to fail. Uh, you know, it's a cliche, but it, you know, it's a cliche and it's true. <laughs> it, and I believe that you know, as a part of my process is creating these long kind of pre-shoot documents, which I discussed earlier. Uh, and which is great because not only does it allow me to keep on the same page as the client, but it also allows me to now start working with my team. So I've already, so you know the client shared with me their brief. I've come back with kind of my understanding of that. Uh, we've kind of gotten together and figured out that we're on the right page, right? Uh, so then the next step is for me to then recruit uh, a stylist, uh, and I talk with the stylist about you know okay this is what the client is after, uh, and I and I have that kind of board already built uh, so I can get an idea. Uh, next step after that, which is just as important is then uh, the stylist will then come back to me with some ideas of what what they're thinking. You know, I mean, you know, and, and, and they add their kind of special special sauce. They add their special uh, sense to the project. You know, now you what did you say? You know, two brains are better than one. You know, you're pitching ideas. Uh, you know, he or she is pitching ideas, and it's really. Um, it, the project starts to build and get more momentum, more momentum, more momentum, all the while uh, keeping in line with what the client is needing. And I was lucky because, uh, you know, I think that uh, there are very few people that enjoy preparation as much as I do and being uh, kind of pre-planning and making sure everything goes off without a hitch. And I think Ashley really falls into that category and uh, so I, I couldn't have been happier. Uh, one of the big things for me is always color palette. Uh, you know, color is kind of like a shortcut to an audience's emotions, right? So I always feel like that's that's where visually that's where I start. You know, is it going to be black and white? Is it going to be color? If if it's going to be color, is it going to be saturated colors or is it going to be more muted tones? 
Uh, if it's black and white, is it going to be kind of contrasty or, or low contrasty? All these th things signal different um, emotional connections for the people in the audience. So for this series, I got to have my cake and eat it too. Um, you know, I actually came with a, a number of kind of great uh, kind of costume ideas. And so that allowed me to kind of split the uh, shoot into sections. So you have kind of like a more kind of bright color poppy section. Um, which, you know, it's kind of shot against white seamless intentionally so that the, um, the colors, would, the, the clothing would pop off. And then the next section was then uh, working with kind of more earth tones. I knew I had this beautiful natural light uh, streaming into the window and which had these nice warm uh, brown floors, right? And so I knew that if I had this nice natural light, white, just uh, flat paint, white wall, with these bare brown uh, floor mats that would you'd essentially end up creating a very earthy feel which was exactly what I was going for because I was going for kind of the uh, the natural beauty and the natural movements of these athletes you know I'm a big uh, film geek so I, I always say that and it's, it's, it's true you know film is my first love uh, and so I'm always reading uh, film history books I'm also a history buff I'm I'm very cool. <laughs> no, but uh, as a kind of a film geek, one of the things that I, I love to read stories about like great directors and try to figure out, um, you know, what is it about their work uh, that made it so amazing. And one of the things you'll notice um, is if you look back at, you know, certain kind of, you know, famous directors or uh, people in the spotlight and you look at their work and if you look just beyond, you know, that kind of top line of credits to the next line of credits, you'll start to notice that one of the things that they do is they tend to work with the same people over and over and over again. You know, so the same director, you know, the same editor and cinematographer will travel with them from project to project. Um, and you'll start to learn that, that the contributions of those team members are just as important as the contribution of the director who's really there, you know, kind of keeping everything in, in in line, but they're really helping him to or, or her to um, achieve the style that they want to achieve to tell tell their story. And for me, you know, uh, hair and makeup, I always turn to uh, Emily Brill, who's uh, been with me on a number of projects, um, and I I just love working with her because she's got um, she's both terrific at her job. But just as important for me is that she's a tremendous uh, personality on set. You know, I think for me, it's the environment of a, of a set is almost as important as the, the raw talent of its team members. I mean, you can have people who are terrific uh, at their job, but if they don't bring the right energy to the set, um, things can get a little out of balance. Uh, it can, you know, it's, it's not great for the client. Um, you know, and what I like to do is I, I'm all about trying to create a positive atmosphere for the client and a positive atmosphere for everybody working there uh, and present on the set so that everybody can you know, kind of feel good about, you know, working there, you know, and, and feel good about the work they're doing and feel that they're contributing and feel that uh, it, it's, it's, it's as much a family there on set as it is just, you know, showing up for a day's work. You know, life's too short to work with people who scream a lot. You know, uh, I would say let let less yelling, more smiling. Right? That's that's kind of the motto that I want on my set. People are more productive that way. You, when people feel safe to contribute ideas, you can get the most out of them that way. And you know, it, and I, a great idea is a great idea, no matter who it, no matter who it comes from, whether it's the uh, myself or, or the you know, third assistant. Uh, you know, a great idea is a great idea and I think it's important to kind of stay open uh, to inspiration from all areas. Uh, that way you stay kind of open to, to magic happening. Of course, none of those efforts behind the camera, you have the best stylist in the world, the best makeup artist, the best uh, creative director, the best art director, none of that would cost a hill of beans unless you've got the right talent in front of the camera. Um, you know, working with models is an incredibly uh, important part of a photographer's job. Uh, getting the best out of them on screen because ultimately that's who the audience needs to connect with. 
you know, when they when they're looking at that uh, image on the page, you know, it's that model's face, it's that model's energy that uh, is sealing the deal. Kelly Kelly is a seasoned pro, and she is she is such a fantastic um, athlete, and she's also such a positive force. You know, she's kind of a positive life force on set. So when you get a chance to work with her, it's it's great because. You know, just she, she brings the right energy and she can do pretty much anything you ask her to do. And this is very important. She's also willing to try almost anything you ask her to do because I know personally something I on set I get inspired, I come up with some crazy ideas. And you know, all I need in life is a uh, a model willing to say, Okay, I'll give it a shot. You know, it may not work, but uh, what you really want is somebody who's who's there and is willing to kind of um, give things a try because when you try things uh, that's when the, kind of the magic happens you know when you do that thing when, it, when you, you're on set and you're like I don't know if this is gonna work um, but I just want to give it a shot and see what happens um, that's usually when the best stuff happens and it's important to have someone on set uh, in front of the camera who's willing to kind of take that ride with you and say you know what let's go for it Tahira is great. Tahira has just kind of a natural kind of bundle of energy. You know, like you, you just put her in front of the, uh, the camera and she, she just, just kind of, your job as a director in that case is really more kind of, you point her in the right direction and then just make sure you're in the right place at the right time to capture whatever it is she's about to do. Um, she's one of those models where, you know, most of your time you'll, you'll be shooting and then you put your camera down for a second to go look at the, at the um, at, at, at the digital text uh, station and then next thing you know she, she, she's just doing something off in the corner you're like well, no, 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 do that again do that again she's doing a move or something like that and you're like I, just, 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 yes 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 you know so it's less of me coming up with amazing ideas and it's more um, being having the timing and being able to um, capture you know what it is that she has to offer you know, I related a, a story that I once read about Chris Farley. Chris Farley was, I mean, on Saturday Night Live, one of the, you know, legendary comic. Uh, he was famous for his kind of energy, kind of manic energy, and kind of, you know, making people laugh. And the story, I was, re I was reading this book, and it was about uh, Chris Farley and the fir his first, the first time he ever tried improv. The first time he was, he was in Chicago. Chicago or, and, and he... He, first time he got on stage, right? And, you know, we of course think of him as this accomplished comedian, but back then he was just a guy trying out improv for the first time. And he's backstage, and he's about to go on, and he suddenly has a panic attack. And he's realized he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm, I've got this thing going, but what, 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 what do I, what do I do? Uh, it's under, I, you know, this. I want to be on stage now. I'm actually on stage, and I, I don't. I'm not prepared. And so his acting teacher's behind, behind, you know, the scenes with him. And he's talking to him, and he says, uh, you know, he has three words for him. He says, you know, attack the stage. And what he meant by that is, you know, when you don't always know exactly what it is you want to do, the best thing you can do is just attack the stage. In other words, go all out, give it everything you got. Um, don't be afraid to make a fool out of yourself, uh, and just attack it. You know, um, in other words, you know, it, it may not work, but if you're going to, you know, lose, lose big, you know, because you also, if, in that case, if you're going to win, you're going to win big, too. Um, and I, what I like for in terms of my models is someone who's willing to attack the stage. You know, I, so I want somebody who's going to go out there and kind of just, you know, and give it, give me all they got. You know, sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. You know, I always tell people, you know, gonna be, we're going to shoot a lot of frames today, but we only need one. You know, we don't need, you know, there, there are going to be some bad ones, there are going to be some um, some great ones, you know, and what we're looking for are the, are the really special ones. But that only happens um, if you're willing to kind of go that extra mile and, and give it all you got. I love it when a model comes up with a pose that I hadn't even thought about. Um, in, yes, and once again, in my kind of extra preparation, uh, I always come up with, with poses just in case because you don't know, you know, what the model's abilities are. But, you know, one of the greatest pleasures as a, as a photographer is when a model, you know, is like, you know, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to try this. Do you mind if I try this? Like, absolutely. I love to kind of get that input uh, and use their creativity. Because now, you know, you're, you've got the client's creativity, you've got your own creativity, you've got stylist creativity, makeup artist creativity. 
uh, and now the model's come up with their own creativity and you're trying to take all those elements and kind of throw it into a pot. So when, you know, model comes up to me and says, well, hey, I'd like to try this, you know, my answer is always, you know, yes, you know, let's, let's give it a shot. You know, I mean, hey, who knows if it'll work or not, but, you know, you, you want you want people who are engaged in the process and, you know, kind of bringing something to the table. Uh, and, you know, I don't care if the ultimate idea comes from myself or from anybody else. What I want is, um, what I want are people who are, who are helping to tell the story, who are giving it their all. It's so great working with creative people to aim for, you know, kind of the same goal. You know, you can get everybody on the same page and really kind of tell the story that the brand is trying to tell. Uh, there's, there's really nothing like it. I love working with a team to tell a story. I mean, there, there's, I mean, yes, it's great, you know, when, you, when you're kind of just, you can take pictures in a vacuum, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, we all have a story to tell, you know, and photography is a collaborative art form. Um, you know, at a bare minimum, it's me and a model. So there's a, there's already something going on there. Um, on you know, once you get up to you know doing kind of you know bigger jobs like I do, then you're talking about you know you, you know you, the client has their own kind of internal team. All of that comes to me. I have my own creative team. We all get together, and you know, and next thing you know, you've got all these wonderful ideas kind of coming. Um, in and out. It's my job to kind of funnel all those, to keep them out of the prize, and kind of eventually uh, convey an emotion that's going to help tell the client's story, you know, to tell, to strengthen the brand identity. It's a challenge and an honor. It's an honor to accept. Um, and in order to really pull that off, it's important to, you know, work with the right people, to bring the right energy, to bring the right attitude to the set to openly communicate with clients so that you make sure that everybody's on the same page and you're getting exactly what it is that they need. And you know, the more we work together, the more we succeed.